Hi, I'm Erin, and this is my summary for week three reading of Speak Up, third edition, chapters two, three, and four. So chapter two starts with the example of Martin Luther King Jr. and his I Have a Dream speech, which he didn't just show up at the podium and give. He definitely put a lot of thought into his speeches, and he prepared very well. And when we do the same, we can have speeches that are just as powerful. So this chapter also gives us a guideline for preparing our speech. And the first thing that you do is invention. So you're coming up with your ideas, you're narrowing them down to a more specific topic, and then you are going to arrange those ideas and think of how you're going to present them. In what logical order can you present them to your audience? And then you'll think about style. How are you going to present them? Um, then practicing what you're going to present. You don't necessarily have to memorize it all, but you need to be familiar, familiar enough with it that you can just jot down a few keywords and notes and then share from there. And then there's delivery, how you're going to present it with your voice and hand gestures and things like that. So when you're giving a speech, you want to, as best you can, analyze your audience. What are their interests? Where are they coming from? What are their learning styles? What common interests do I have with them that I can use to engage them as I'm giving my speech? So then you're going to select your topic, which will often go off of your audience sometimes. What are they interested in hearing? What do they need to hear? Or what am I passionate about? What can I share? What information do I have that I can share with an audience? You don't want to use overused topics or if you do use a topic that you've used before, make sure you go at a different angle so that people don't get bored. You're then going to de determine your purpose in your speech. Are you trying to persuade people? Are you trying to just inform them? Or are you celebrating something like a wedding or graduation? So after you decide your topic and the purpose of it, you're also going to create a thesis statement, which is a one line explaining what the whole point of the speech is. Just one sentence. If it's any more than that, your topic is probably too broad. And then you'll come up with supporting material, you'll do your research, you'll come up with statistics or information that supports your main point or stories or whatever you need to get your point across. And make sure that you keep track of your information if it's a book that you used or a article or something like that. Make sure you have all the information that you need to make sure that you're not plagiarizing. So a speech, when you're writing it, will have an introduction, the body, and then the conclusion. The point of the introduction is to tell the people what you're going to tell them. And then in the body, you tell them what you're telling them. And then the conclusion is telling them what you told them. So they all build off one another. The, the body, of course, is the main point. And so you want to start with the body and make sure that it's well written and explains your point properly and then you will go back and use your introduction to prepare your audience for what you're going to tell them. And you'll think about what you're going to use to present whether it's a PowerPoint or pictures or stories or whatever it is that you need to best ex express your ideas to your audience. And then you might want to practice it in front of friends or family or in front of a video that you can play back. So then there's chapter three, which talks about ethics. I think this is pretty self-explanatory for believers. We don't want to be cheating and taking people's ideas and claiming them as our own. We want to make sure that we're being honest. We want to make sure that we're not manipulating our audience or giving them false information that we haven't properly researched. Because it is our role as believers to uphold the truth, as it says in 2 Timothy 2.15. So 
So for chapter four, it talks about listening. Um, the first section is about listening ourselves to presenters and we want to make sure that we're courteous and that we're not just hearing the words but also listening to them and processing them and thinking through how we can apply them to our lives. Because that's what we would want from our audience if we were the ones speaking. Now there are ways that we can help people to better listen when we're presenting. So we want to make sure that we pay attention to different learning styles and listening styles. So we need to use visuals and auditory and interactive things that will help all of our audience no matter how they learn or even if they don't want to learn how we can engage them to hear what we are trying to, to get across. So that's essentially chapters two, three, and four, and thanks for listening.